I just don't recommend it. I think it's a stupid practice. Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. The channel for everything Honda Goldwing, motor vlogs, DIY tips, hacks, and of course those accessory installation and review videos. If you're a passionate Honda Goldwing enthusiast or you just want to watch somebody who is, you're in the right place. And I would appreciate it if you click that little subscribe button down below. And if you click on the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Just had coffee uh, at Einstein Bagels, my typical morning run. I'm on my way back home right now. And of course, I was planning to do my motor vlog, and I just was a little surprised and disappointed to find out that my GoPro Hero 7 Black is completely dead will not come on will not record i is fully charged i even tried taking the battery out and putting the battery back in you cannot get it to turn on at all so i get to deal with that when i get home see if i can get a warranty replacement or see what else maybe i can try to get it to fire up but in my last video where i talked about the goldwing being what i thought maybe the safest motorcycle ever built I did leave out a few things. You know, at, at, uh, you get older, you start forgetting things. And I, I'm actually gonna start making some notes and keeping them with me on the bike so I can remember all the things I wanted to talk about. But just a couple of things I forgot to mention that some of you were gracious enough to put into the comments of the last video. I completely forgot to talk about the fact that Honda is the only motorcycle and the Goldwing is the only motorcycle that has an airbag version where you can actually have an airbag on your motorcycle. Now that's a huge safety feature. I wish we could see some statistics on how many uh, riders actually have been saved by that airbag that I never have actually seen a statistic on that but it'd be real interesting uh, to know how many of those airbags have deployed and how effective they've been also one of you pointed out that uh, another safety feature of this motorcycle is the incredibly loud horn unlike most motorcycles that have a little wimpy horn the Goldwing has a really substantial automotive style uh, horn. So that's a huge safety feature. I use mine all the time. And then the last thing I left out was the Hill Start Assist. And Hill Start Assist, especially, I mean, obviously, if you have the DCT model, you just about, you just have to have it. And it really works well. I was in. Uh, Knoxville last year for the wing ding and I was pulling my trailer and I ended up on a side street and to get back onto the main street I must have been at a 40 degree angle it was unbelievable how steep this hill was I could barely see anything going up onto the main road very very technical and very dangerous and even with the trailer attached at that steep of an angle if I hadn't had the hill start assist, I don't know what I'd have done because it really saved my bacon on that one. So that's a great safety feature too. But today, my topic that I wanted to talk about was drinking and riding. And this was a really big topic of discussion back when I was a member of the Harley group back in 2005, 2006, when I had a Harley Sportster. I was a very active member of the local uh, hog chapter, North Texas uh, Hog Harley-Davidson group, 
and it was a very very active chapter and they had a lot of dinner rides during the week and each week we would meet I think it was on a Wednesday night we would meet at a different uh, local restaurant bar and a lot of those guys were putting away a lot of beer or other alcoholic beverages and then they'd turn you know leave and get on their bike some of them didn't even wear helmets and quite honestly it wouldn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't unusual for there to be 30 to 50 people at one of these dinner rides they were that popular and it was that large of a harley group and i would bet every third dinner ride there was an accident or somebody got injured i know one night a guy was coming back down i-35 after the dinner ride it was about 10 o'clock at night and he was going about 70 miles an hour on his Harley. I don't remember his name. I don't even remember what ended up happening to him. But I know that a, a truck, a pickup truck, was passing on his left. And the pickup truck was pulling a very long flatbed trailer. And before the trailer got past this Harley rider, he moved over to change lanes. And of course, he hit that trailer. And he had been at the dinner ride, and I'm pretty sure he had been drinking. And uh, I doubt that that ended up very well for him. Because when you're going 70 miles an hour on a highway, and you hit something, and you go down, it's going to be painful, if not fatal. Now, I have a, you know, I enjoy a beer every now and then. I enjoy my Crown Royal at night. But when I'm riding... I'm not drinking. If I end up somewhere on my motorcycle and I know I'm going to have to ride after dinner or after a drink, I might have one beer or I might have one glass of wine, but then I'm going to wait at least an hour, at least an hour, maybe two, before I get back on that motorcycle. And I would say that might happen once every 18 months I just don't drink and ride I just pretty pretty strict about that first of all I don't ride much after dark and I don't drink during the day so for me drinking and riding really isn't doesn't come into play very much but if I were to go somewhere like I don't know some evening ride with a group of people and have a beer I would make sure I waited at least an hour after finishing the beer before I got on the motorcycle and I would never drink more than one. So that's just my policy, that's just my way of uh, dealing with it. It's just not worth it. Drinking and riding simply don't mix. Drinking and driving simply don't mix. And I remember as a kid. Uh, we would go from Midland, Texas to Dallas, and my and our uh, my stepfather at the time, and it was nothing for him to drink a six pack of beer for, on the way from Midland to Dallas. He'd have a he, you know he'd have a cold one in his lap. This was in the 60s, throwing the empties out the window. If he got stopped by the police, they they didn't care. They didn't. It was it just wasn't that big a deal back then not like it is now but if you're riding on two wheels and you're drinking before you're riding or before you get on the bike man you are taking a huge risk and you're putting other people at risk too especially if you're riding with a passenger on the pillion no way it's just not worth it so that's my thoughts on the practice of drinking and riding. I just don't recommend it. I think it's a stupid practice. And uh, that's my two cents worth on that subject. Now this last week, I was over at Don Smith's house doing a interview for his YouTube channel. He seems to find uh, the story of Cruise Man sort of interesting. 
and he thinks you guys are going to find it interesting. <laughs> we'll find out, I guess. But uh, we finished up the interview portion, and he's, I mean, think he's finishing up the editing on it right now. So when he's got that up on his YouTube channel, I will make sure to let you know. You might want to just check out his YouTube channel and go over there and subscribe anyway. He's got some really cool uh, motovlog stuff that he does with that Insta360 camera. It gets those 360 degree uh, shots. It's pretty interesting, and he's got some interesting things to say. So check out his channel. I'll put the link in the description down below. And we're in the final days of our August promotion for the 2018 Plus uh, Goldwing maintenance videos. If you ride a 2018 to 2019 Goldwing and you haven't got your maintenance videos yet, check them out on my website. I'll put a link in also for you. And we've got a really good deal right now, best deal we've ever offered on those videos. And I am announcing that in the future, I don't know when yet, it probably it will certainly be before the end of the year, uh, it looks like we'll be looking at a possible price increase on those videos, because we're going to be adding a lot more videos to the set. Now for those of you that already have the videos, uh, you'll get those new videos that come out automatically. But if you don't have the videos, then of course you'd have to pay the higher price when we do change that price. So just be aware that now is a great time to get those maintenance videos. By doing these things yourself on your own Goldwing at home with your own tools, and they're really pretty simple tools, you're going to save about a thousand dollars a year in dealer labor charges. Do you know a dealer is going to charge you three to four hundred dollars to change an air filter? Can you believe that? And we're going to show you how to do it yourself. It might take you three or four hours the first time you do it, but you'll save three or four hundred dollars, and you'll more than pay for these videos the first time you use them. So check them out. So that's my shameless plug for the week. I'm just about to pull into my neighborhood. Once again, I want to say thanks for joining us on Cruise Man's Motor Vlog. Got some more new videos coming up for the uh, YouTube channel here pretty soon. So again, thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, I'd also like to hear your thoughts on riding and drinking in the comments down below. Please send your comments on that. If you have any experience with it, if you've had any friends that have had bad experiences with drinking and riding, put them in the comments. You could save someone's life. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to join us next time on Cruise Man's Motovlog.